Because there are a lot of people that say, you know, at the beginning I could support the, the protest movement in Syria when it was peaceful, but then they decided to become violent. They decided to pick up guns, and at that point I can no longer support them. And um, so the first question is, was militarization a mistake? And I think the answer, or one of the answers anyway, is yes. In many obvious ways, it was definitely a mistake. And why was it a mistake? For a variety of reasons. Firstly, because it alienated key constituencies inside Syria and outside Syria that the revolution needed to win over. So certain members, not all of them, but members of religious minorities, for example, when they saw bearded men from the countryside shouting Allahu Akbar with Kalashnikovs in their hands, a lot of people got scared. They thought, wait, wait a minute, this might not be about democracy and, and social justice, it might be about armed Islamism coming to, to kill us. Um, of course, the West got scared, of course, the bourgeoisie got scared when they saw working class men with guns. It looked scary to them. It was also, and more fundamentally, a mistake because once it got militarized, you move from this mass movement, horizontally organized, which brought together people from a huge range of um, ideological, sectarian, um, ethnic, regional, and class backgrounds, um, it transformed that movement into a cacophony of a thousand competing authoritarians. Because, of course, when you get uh, 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 lots of militias, you get lots of militia leaders. And each militia leader has to reach out to rich men in <coughs> Syrian society, rich men in the Gulf, um, ri other states begging for weapons and for funds. And, and then they're all in competition with each other. They have to say, I'm more Muslim than him, I'm more violent than he is, and I'm stronger than he is, so give your weapons to me, not to, to him. So you get this competition of different authoritarians. So for those obvious reasons, it was a mistake. And of course it gave the regime an excuse to dramatically escalate its violence. Um, however, saying that they made a mistake this in itself is a misconception, because it is not the case that one day all of Syria's revolutionaries had a mass meeting <laughs> in which they debated, you know, shall we, shall we be violent or shall we not be violent? And at the end they had a vote, yes, we'll be violent, and then they all went out and got Kalashnikovs. That's now not how it happened. Quite the opposite. The, the biggest revolutionary bodies, like the local coordination committees, if you read their um, commentary and their statements, um, in the last half of 2011, the first half of 2012. And the LCCs were begging people, they were saying, we understand the provocations, but please don't pick up weapons. This is what he wants. This is helping him. This is, this is not helping the, the revolution. It was not a central decision. It was the product of a million individual decisions made under fire. And very often the people who made those decisions, the men who picked up weapons, knew politically that it was a mistake as they picked up the weapons, but they felt that they had no other option. And I can't blame them for that, because let's look at three of the ways in which the, the regime provoked a war. 